Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm doing textile color or coloring, and this is part three in the series, and I'm calling this cover up, and you'll see why as we go on. I have what I'm using is um, some Jacquard textile color paint that I mixed a couple different colors to make just a greenish, it'll probably come out kind of yellow on the fabric. I have a foam brush, but you could try a different kind of brush. I have a little container that I'll be using for uh, the paint. I have a variety of different pieces. These happen to be metal, like broken jewelry or old jewelry pieces, and I want as flat as can be, and I like to have some openings. So I just have a variety. I'm also trying a few things. This is not really flat, but I should get the outline and maybe the top on the top. We'll see. So I just have a variety of pieces. I'm also doing leaves. If you can see over here, I have some that I just cut out of lace. I have a little flower. I have some other metal leaves, different sizes. And then I have some that I cut out of tape. You can cut some out of freezer paper and actually iron them onto the fabric. But we're just gonna see how these turn out today. I have two different uh, pieces of fabric. This is what I normally paint on. This is my Pima cotton. It's very, very tightly woven and it's not as sheer. And then I have just regular muslin, and, and it is, of course, uh, a little more sheer and a lighter weight. The weave is bigger. I really like using this as my preferred fabric. They have their pluses, their pros, and their cons. So I'm going to first, I'm gonna put this in a box. I'm on a surface that I can move, but I'm going to be spraying, oh, sorry, you need a Mr. Bottle, a really fine Mr. Bottle, one that you know is going to work. Hopefully mine still will. Sometimes they get plugged up as I'm using them, and that gives me a little trouble. But anyway, I'm going to put this into a box because there's going to be overspray. If you have a nice big surface that is covered, then you don't maybe care about it. But I would prefer not to get overspray on some of the surface. So I'm going to put a box up here and set this into the box, and then I'll be back to show you the next step. Sometimes you have to sort of go with whatever is happening, and so you're going to end up with painted fabric no matter what. If you get the design, that's good. If you get the design and another design, that's even better. I'm, I have my fabric folded in half and a little bit of a crease on this side. Because I'm using the same color paint, I'm going to do two at the same time. I'm going to open this out, and I'm going to open this side out. I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. You could use other fabric to mark to block this off, or you could use paper that you might use in another kind of, another piece of art collage or something. And that's so that I don't get overspray on the top part that's gonna cover it up. I have a salvage on these. I don't usually like the salvage in my pieces, but on this I'm not too concerned about it. So now I'm going to, I have my piece blocked off. I don't care if the overspray gets there. Be sure and have some paper towel because you're gonna wanna mop up places. I'm going to take, and I've never used lace uh, for this kind of technique, so we'll see what happens. I should have pressed it, but that's sticking pretty well. I'm too close to the salvage, so I'm going to move it over a tad. Again, using the salvage is up to you. It's just a tight woven area. Oh my goodness. I'm going to put these little taped pieces, and blue tape usually comes up after it gets wet, so... Just realized that could happen. I like these are kind of abstract. And then I'm going to take the metal pieces. I've used these leaves a lot. They were just in a piece of jewelry that I purchased. You could take some chain. And if it has a design like this, it's different on the front and the back. You decide which side you want up. Because I know how, the, I'm hoping I know how this is going to turn out. I want the raised side or what would be the right side of the jewelry to be on the uh, top. And I'm just going to lay these down. These aren't totally flat, but they're flat enough, I think, for this project. Let's sprinkle them around a little. The idea is that you can use this fabric as it is. You can cut it up and use it in other kinds of um, maybe collage or quilting, hand stitching projects with... Um, embroidery, just a lot of things you could do. Patch, make patchwork out of it and put it into a quilt. Okay, now I'm going to take the pieces that I set the box on, oops, and put them on the other side. 
So when I was speaking about that, what, what to do with it, you can think, do I want there to be actual composition within this, the appearance of this, or do I want to be able, do I know that I want to cut them out, and so it doesn't matter really what, what shape they're in. What arrangement, I should say, that they're in. Some of these have the top on them because they were jewelry. I'm not concerned about that. It's sometimes a good place to put a bead if you're doing hand stitching. Again, this one's really raised, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. This is kind of looking... So if you think you're going to cut or tear the fabric, you might want them kind of in a line. <clears throat> now that I have those down, I'm going to take my paint and it's kind of milk consistency, even a little thinner. It's more of a wash is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be tilting the bottle down. You want it to have quite a bit in it, or be sure you turn it so that the, the tube is where the paint is if it starts to not work. And I'm gonna just mist. Oh, so far so good, but you can see this is looking quite yellow. My preference would have had it be, whoops, and there goes my paper. Uh, another thing, tape the paper up on the side of the box. That would be a good trick. We'll just kind of, usually I bend the paper in there. Hopefully that's not going to boing up. This might be more of an experiment than I wanted. And I'm kind of sorry that my paint's going underneath there because I'd rather it was right on the top. I'm going to just saturate it pretty well. If you want it more speckly, you can do that. But you do want the fabric to be cut, covered. And you can see that my... Bottle's starting to say, nope, not going to work. So that's okay. Now I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. I want to make sure I have some paint left in here because I'll be using that for the next step. I'm going to take the paper off. Going to, I'm going to grab my paper towel, and that's another thing. I save these paper towels because you can use those in a project just to get where it might drip off, get that part off of there. I'm on plastic, um, and of course that doesn't soak in, so that's going to give me some drips if I'm not careful. Now I'm going to take the fabric that has not been colored, and I'm going to fold it over on top of those pieces. And that was not a good fold. Try and do it straight if you can. Or just don't worry about it. It will start to pick up the paint that's on the object. You can help it along. Because this is dry fabric, that design is going to stay there. So this is the part that is going on the dry fabric first. And you can tell what happened with the, the lace. The lace drank that up. Drank that paint right up so I'm not getting the uh, design. But it's not going to matter, really. Because we have another step to do after this. I'm using these two different fabrics so that you can see uh, some of the difference. Even though I'm using different objects, there's still a lot of them are metal and flat, so it'll be kind of the same. This has a bead on top of it, so it's really sticking up there. Okay, now I'm going to take this out of my box, remove the box, and then I'll be back. Okay, next step is... To, ooh, I just love this color. To take your paint and put it in a container that you can put the foam brush into. I don't know if I need all of that or not, but that's going to be all I put in there. Now this can move on you, so you want to sort of be patient with yourself and just realize that. I'm still going to push this down a little because it's dry. It's going to take the, that design. So I wait just a little bit. Let that kind of soak in, because remember, if it's on dry fabric, that paint's not going to move as much. So I pick, let the foam brush soak up some paint. 
You want it pretty, pretty full of paint. You do have to hold the fabric, usually, because it's going to want to pull away if you push down very hard. And these lines may show. That's why if you want to use a regular paintbrush, you want to like try that. I just think once you get the idea of how this is done and what you can achieve, you want to just try anything that you can try. Different elements, different paint brushes, or different ways of applying the paint. That's really drinking up the paint. And I don't care if there's air pockets or anything like that because all of that's going to add to the texture. So I feel like it's covered well enough. Sometimes you want to go over this, the folded edge a couple times because that can be its own resist and keep the paint from going into the fold. Now at this point, you can do a few different things. You can just leave it where it is. You can turn a lamp on it. And depending on how I sprayed in the beginning will make a difference on how, if there's white left underneath like this piece. So it's just a lot of experiment in playing, but you can see I got fun fabric. I'm going to wipe this up a little bit more. And then because I have a sunny day here, I'm actually going to set it out in the sun. It will dry lighter in the sun. The fabric will end up being lighter than if I just let it slow dry. It takes patience. Don't lift it up until it's completely dry. Well, I mean, you can but I would, it would be best if you'd let it completely dry. So that's the hardest part of this project is being patient. I will let mine dry and then I will come back and show you and we'll do an uncovering. Okay, I'm ready to open these pieces up. I'm not sure the very bottom is dry, but it's going to be good enough for now. See that design? How pretty is that? Now I'm going to move these. Flower didn't show up very much, probably because it wasn't as heavy. Let's see what the lace did. Oh, that's kind of cool. Let's see what the tape did. As you can see, the tape wasn't as good of a resist, but it's still fun. It still left a pretty cool mark. Let's look at the other side. Well, I'm pretty pleased with that piece. Let's see what else we've got here. Slide this over. Feather didn't show very much. Again, the lightest thing. Not show at all, really. These little ones. See where the water seeped under? So I'm not... I'm not really disappointed in that. This almost came out better on this back side of this. Oh yeah, the fun parts there. I was just going to talk for a second here about what I do at this point. I will heat set them with the iron. That's what the manufacturer suggests to do. What I usually do is rinse it. After I heat set it, I rinse it in clear water and then I heat set it or iron it till it's dry. So that's my textile coloring undercover. I hope that you found it interesting and that it looks like a fun idea to try and that you'll try it. If you did like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and please leave a comment if you'd like to. Subscribe if you haven't and be sure and tap the bell so that you'll get notifications for my latest videos. This has been Ann. Thanks a lot for watching.